We've discussed the importance of preventing liquid water from entering our building from the outside. Let's not underestimate the importance of managing water vapor flow, both from the outside in and the inside out. Now the amount and direction of flow will be driven by differences in exterior and interior humidity, differences in temperature, and differences in air pressure created by wind and mechanical systems such as forced air furnaces and large exhaust fans. The flow of water vapor occurs when a difference in humidity is present. For example, on a hot humid day when the air conditioner is running, it is both cooling and dehumidifying the interior. This difference in humidity levels between outside and inside creates a flow of water vapor from the outside in. On a cold day, the flow of water vapor will move from the indoors to the outdoors when the relative humidity is higher inside. Indoor relative humidity is created by lifestyle activities such as cooking, showering, and even breathing. Differences in temperature create a flow of air, water vapor, and energy from warm to cold. The greater the difference in temperature, the greater these flows. When the temperature is warmer inside than outside, a flow is created through penetrations in the top of the building. This warmer air flows through recess lights, fireplaces, and flues. This is called the stack effect. As this warmer air leaves the building, it must be replaced with cooler air from the outside, resulting in uncomfortable drafts. A difference in air pressure is another force that allows air, water vapor, and energy to flow. A difference in air pressure can be created by the wind. When the wind blows against the house, it creates a pressure difference across the building. On the windward side of the home, air flows in. On the leeward side, air is drawn out. This air flow can carry energy and moisture into the home and out of the home. Another source of air pressure can come from our mechanical systems. Each time we operate a fan, whether the range hood, central vac, or clothes dryer, we create a difference in pressure that can draw air and water vapor into the home. This replacement air enters the home through the path of least resistance, which oftentimes is the flue or chimney. This can compromise indoor air quality. Because we cannot control Mother Nature or the lifestyle of the occupants, the best way to manage these flows is to seal all penetrations in the building envelope and provide mechanical ventilation. To manage the air and vapor flow from the inside to the outside, you can seal the drywall, seal the outlet boxes, foam the wire and plumbing holes, and seal all penetrations between the living space and the unconditioned space. Using spray foam insulation to seal these holes not only provides insulative benefits, but also acts as a barrier to air, heat, and moisture flow. In very cold climates, a sealed membrane is sometimes installed between the drywall and the studs as a vapor diffusion and airflow retarder. This can significantly reduce the flow of water vapor from the interior of the home into the wall cavity. This technique presents challenges when using reservoir cladding in very cold climates with hot humid summers. This is because the moisture stored in the cladding can be driven into the wall assembly and condense on the membrane when the interior is being air conditioned. For this reason, we recommend not installing a membrane with reservoir cladding, but maintaining a proper air seal and a painted wall finish. There are paints available that can help reduce the flow of moisture through the wall while still allowing the wall to dry. These are just two examples that show the complexity of managing water vapor. So to determine the proper air and vapor retarder system for your building and climate, we recommend you refer to the details in the Builder's Guide. The main thing to remember about managing air and vapor flow is that the vapor retarder must be well installed and the air barrier must be continuous. Any holes, penetrations, or breaks in the air barrier will leak air and create potential moisture problems in the wall cavity. Examples of typical holes, penetrations, and breaks in continuity include recessed lights, outlets, switch, and junction boxes, plumbing and electrical penetrations, interior wall to exterior wall and wall to ceiling or floor connections, and unbacked soffits, chases, dropped and coffered ceilings. Today's houses have more recessed lights than ever before. 
These added penetrations create the opportunity for warm, moist air to move into the attic and condense in the insulation or on the roof sheathing in cold climates. In hot, humid climates, they can allow humid air to enter the building. To manage these problems in attics, use airtight insulation contact rated recessed light fixtures. Make sure they are properly installed and connected to the interior airflow retarder. Recessed lights installed in drop ceilings or soffits must be draft stopped. In exterior walls and insulated ceilings, airtight outlet boxes should always be installed. Plumbers cut a lot of large holes. Therefore, it's important to locate plumbing on interior walls whenever possible. If these holes must be located on exterior walls or in unconditioned spaces, seal, flash, and insulate them carefully. Electricians also create a lot of holes around the building. So, carefully seal all holes and breaks in the exterior air barrier. All holes in the exterior wall assembly and holes between floors need to be sealed as well. Interior wall to exterior wall connections also present a challenge to maintaining the continuity of the insulation as well as the airflow retarder. Depending on your climate zone, this may require additional blocking or a thin rigid structural sheathing. Drywall should be sealed around rough openings of windows and doors, at top and bottom plates of exterior walls, and where interior walls meet exterior walls. In very cold climates, where a membrane is being installed as an air barrier, additional precautions must be taken to maintain the continuity of this layer at the intersections of the interior and exterior walls. This membrane must also be caulked around all rough openings, top and bottom plates, junction boxes, and recessed light fixtures. This membrane should have a perm rating of 1 or higher. Today's home designs have created an increased number of interior framing conditions that can cause very high levels of uncontrolled air leakage. These conditions include soffits, utility chases, dropped ceilings, coffered ceilings, knee walls, and stairways at exterior walls or garage walls. These often are the largest holes in the building shell and are the most difficult to find or seal once the building has been completed. The goal is to plan ahead and look for where these framing conditions may occur, and then to seal them up either prior to or during the framing process. This may be done with rigid materials such as plywood, OSB, rigid foam insulation, or drywall that is caulked or sealed in place.